I have you, everything has you with an IE, so please forgive me. Okay, all right, so there you go. That's the, that's the platform. Yes. And then here is the Sabbath school, or and I'm sorry, here is the prayer meeting. And so, um, so Sherry is a month from now. So, um, and Aaron is in March, besides Elder and I. Anyone else that wants to join can. This is Sabbath school. And so this Sabbath, I will be doing it, Brent, and then Kamran, then Aaron, then Maria, and then Sherry. I actually have the whole year, but that's subject to change. Actually, there you go. Again, Pastor, Kamran, Sherry, Aaron, Brent, and Kathy. Then here's the General Assembly calendar, which I'll show you this way here. And then I'll print these up. But I have to go and re-download the print drivers because what worked on Sabbath does not work now. Okay? So, um, why don't we go ahead and go in? We're just going to be, not just going to be. Are you loaded up? Okay. Um, 2024 is going to be great. It already is. However, with that, it's going to be probably one of the hardest years of most people's lives. Because the struggle between good and evil is going to be more magnified. Rather than going on the shadows, it's going to go on openly. Because, you know, like when King Herod, when King Herod, he first tried to be uh, slick. He tried to be a trickster, right? Remember what? What the Lord said, go tell that fox, you know, Herod, that was Herod's son. But but it was but you understand that that he was tried to be slick. He tried to do everything where, without anybody knowing. But then when it came to getting the power that he wanted and to remove any possible someone to stand in his way, he didn't care. He openly killed the babies. Right. We can expect an open rebellion this year. See, I often try to tell people, you know, people wonder, why would a woman who is in her 40s leave her husband than when she was getting 80% of what she wanted? Because she was so focused on the 20%. Why would someone leave the faith when the idea of it coming together and finishing up is so much more? See, we're all struggling with believing and belonging. It really is. Didn't matter. I remember reading about Ellen White in, in the year 1888. And one of the things that she said, she said that she had no faith. Do you know what no faith means? She said she had no faith. She was at home sick. She had her home in Elmshaven. She had, she said, I had no faith. She said, but the brethren said that they were praying for her and they wanted her to come down to Fresno, down to Fresno for some meetings. And she said she didn't go to the meetings, you know, on her own faith. She went on the faith of the others who had called her to the meetings because the battle had been so hard. The church leaders are so hard headed. They are so difficult at times to deal with. And she said, she said she had no faith, but when others shared their faith, it invigorated her to believe. And she said she was having such pain. She had deterioration of the bones 
uh, and in her, in, her, in, her, in, her, in her buttocks where her coccyx was deteriorating the bones. So she had to have a, ver a very nice seat riding in, you know, um, it was a horse and wagon. And so she told him to take the spring seat off and give her the regular seat. And so she did that and she rode it all the way down, where, however far, if she took the train, I don't know how far she went, but God took care of her so much that she was able to then go on to meet the rebellion uh, at the uh, Minneapolis meetings in 1888. So why am I saying this to you? Because we're told that we will need to gather warmth from other people's coldness. And that you can't really get warm from somebody's coldness. What you do is you get warm because you're reminded of what God already said. And you said, oh, this is just a revelation of what he already told me. So I'm sharing these things with you so that we would remember to pray with one another. And so I'm going to encourage us to pray now. So those that are able, would you bow with me? I'm going to spend a few moments with the Lord before we go into our subject. I'm going to ask if you can turn on my microphone for my computer so that I can play something. It's not on. Whatever is going on, it's not on. You need to turn it on on the board next to you, please. Father in heaven.
heaven. Lord, we thank you again that we can come to you in the middle of the week and at any time, really. And Lord, as we seek to understand the truth that is written in the last book of the word of the Holy Scriptures, even the revelation of Jesus Christ, we ask that you would be with us and that you would help us. Lord, it, it saddens us to see that there are many that are not here. But it rejoices us to know that whether it be many or few, you said that where two or three are gathered together in your name, there you are in the midst. And Lord, we come because you said and we have hearkened to your words. We pray you would be with us. Forgive me my sins and that you would help me to not only speak that which is true, that which is right, but to do so in the spirit and manner of Christ to draw and to save as many as possible. And Lord, please help us to see that which you've desired to be revealed. Give us eyes to see and ears to hear, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, I am one of those... When it comes to the Word of God, I'm far more open than many, only because when it comes to revelation... Like I just came and studying this weekend, and one of the things I was studying was, was whether or not all prophets have to keep the Ten Commandments. Now that is a really big, because I don't know, I believe so, but I know that Balaam was a true prophet at one time. But I don't know if he kept if he had the if he kept the Ten Commandments. Do you understand? It's one of those things. And the reason why I said that is because I've been studying out some things and I'm going to be sharing with you. Uh, I said we're going to be talking on this Sabbath, talking about specifically Abraham Lincoln. The Civil War, Donald Trump and the Second Coming. Because I don't know if you remember, we got a video that was sent on our on our, our group chat. It was about the the 2025 movement. Anybody know about this 2025 movement? 
And it's a big thing. Uh, there's a very famous Adventist pastor that did. I watched one video it was about three hours long. But his whole point was proving that since the 1980s. The first day prophets have been prophesying that Donald Trump would be president in 2025 to help turn this country around. But his point to prove, and I just had a Bible study on this on Sabbath with someone, his point was to prove that because these people were not Sabbath keepers or they weren't of us, that their prophesying was false. And I said, that's false interpretation. And the reason why I said it is not because they, that may be true. They may be the prophets of Baal. I don't know. But I do know is that when God tries to talk to his people and his people will not hear him, who will he talk to? Now, I don't know if you know. Do you understand what I'm saying? Can you turn on the yellow, yellow microphone, please? Can the clean water come out of a dirty stream? Well, let me answer you this with this. Let me give you Bible. We're talking about Revelation. Go with me in your Bibles to the book of Revelation chapter one. I'm going to give you two verses. Revelation chapter one and verse one. Watch what the Bible says. Revelation one, verse one. I'm going to look and see what the scripture itself says. Revelation one, verse one. The Bible, because this is the principle, because we're going to go back to this. Daniel and John teach what? Same. The same things. The Bible is consistent. Okay. We've seen this, you know, the charts, the same thing that Daniel was teaching here is taught, you know, in the revelation. We're talking about there's the high priest. Oh, this is not correct. Also, you can know a tree by the fruit. Yes, that is correct. Oh, Lord. <laughs> oh, this is not. Okay. All right. Let's see. Uh, no, I, I'm erasing that. Just move forward. That I thought. So Daniel, the prophecies of Daniel, Daniel 7, you know, all the way through the prophecies of Daniel and the prophecies of the revelation. You know, these that are located here. OK, this chart is the prophecies of Daniel. Christ is the center and the prophecies of the revelation here. Same, same. Watch Revelation 1 verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which who? God gave unto him. So did Jesus have his own revelation? Did he reveal himself? No. The scripture says that the revelation of Jesus Christ, which who gave him? Who revealed him? God revealed it. God gave it to him to do what? To show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. Verse 2. Who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of how much? All things that he did what? He saw it with his own eyes. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for what? The time is at hand. All right. So. I said, what was our, what were we discussing just a moment ago? It says the time is at hand. Is that what it says right there? Yes. Go with me to your book of Joel. Let me show you. That the Does the pro prophet have to keep the Ten Commandments? Ah, we're going to find out. Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2, and we're going to go to verse 23. Let me ask you a question. What comes first? The spirit or the truth?
Joel chapter 2, we're going to go to verse 23. Joel 2 and verse 23. The Bible says, Be ye glad, be glad then ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the what? And the latter rain when? All right. Seventh-day Adventists have had how many prophets? Three. Right? Hazen Foss, William Foy, and Ellen White. Let me say it again. Seventh-day Adventists, before they were Seventh-day Adventists, were given how many? Three prophets. I'll write their names again. Hazen, Foss, hold on, William, Foy, and Ellen White. First name was Gould. Now, Hazen Foss, Hazen Foss, was rebellious, or I'll say it another way, he was afraid to preach because he, he cared about how people looked at him. The same problem that Jonah had, how people viewed him. And see, he, so he never gave the message, but he received the visions. Then he was a mulatto, she was a mulatto, he was black. Af just total black man, Negro. William Foy, did he prophesy? Yes, he did. You can look it up in the writings of the pioneers. You type in, he has all of his writings are put, they had bought, they, he went down and he had them notarized, everything that he shared. We have his writings. William Foy. This one here is Ellen White. Let me ask you a question. What year did God's people receive the Sabbath at, at large? Mm -mm. They did not start keeping the Sabbath. They had it, uh, the Sabbath had come in here. The Sabbath came in. People knew about the Sabbath. Some did. They knew about it before. 1844 or about that time period but it was 1846 to 1848 that they had something called the sabbath conferences that's where they studied the truths that are here. So you'll see, not this chart, let me go to another one. Or did I put in the, rep, the other one? Yeah, but I need, um, no, this is not the 1851. These, I need the 1851, okay? So this is the 1843 chart. The 1850 chart has the Sabbath on it because it has the it has the first, second and third angels message. Now, let me ask you a question. Was she keeping Sabbath when she was first became a prophet? What about him? What about him? So what now I'm going to give you Bible for this, right? Keeping Sabbath is not required in order to be a prophet. I'm going to give you more proof. You're in Joel chapter 2. Watch this now. Verse 28. The foundation of our message is not the Sabbath. Sabbath is a pillar built on the foundation. Yes, that is correct. Joel chapter 2 and verse 28. Look what the Bible says. 
28 and 29. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my what, everyone? Okay, so now watch this now. In order to be a prophet, what must you receive? You have to receive the spirit of prophecy. Correct? Is the spirit the letter or the spirit? What comes first? Which comes first, spirit or truth? Spirit. Now, why? You know what? The spirit leads us into all truth. I'm going to show you that in just a moment. What? You know why I'm making a big point about this? Is because to misunderstand this is to believe Error it is to possibly reject someone who is speaking by God because they don't come in a way that we want to see them. Is, is, is a donkey a clean animal or an unclean animal? An ass, a donkey. It's unclean. Did it speak by the spirit to a man? Because God couldn't reach the man. He had to use what he had to try to save the man's life. Now, am I saying, listen, I am trying to show seven day Adventists have the truth. But the problem is we don't normally see people that have the truth that have this have the spirit. Why do so many leave the church? Because somebody was mean to them at church. Somebody pulled them aside and said, if you ever wear those pants here to church again. Or some foolishness like that. Right. Do we dump the truth on people when they come to church? Or do we pour upon them the thing that we're supposed to pour on them? Go with me in your Bibles to the book of, did I read verse 28 and 29? 28 and 29. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your, your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids, in those days will I pour out my spirit. Who is available to get the spirit at that time? Everybody. This is. Listen, this puts me at odds with the major, with a great number of pastors and leaders in the church. But I don't care. I care about the truth as it is in Jesus. And when I look back and see how he's worked in the past, I can know how he can work now. He is working. So, yes, it's true before. So now. So watch. So the year. 1844 is the dividing line. What's the dividing line? Now, God, if God is leading them by his spirit, his spirit's going to lead them into how much? Go with me to go to go with me in your Bibles to the book of John, chapter 14, John, chapter 14. And we're going to go to verse 26. Actually, let's go to John 15, 26 first, and then we'll go to John 14, 26. John 15, verse 26. Watch why. John 15, 26, the Bible says, but when the comforter is come, whom I will send from send unto you from the father, even the spirit of what? The spirit of truth, which proceeded from the father, he shall testify of me. So that must be the comforter coming is associated with the revelation of Jesus Christ. Because is he testifying of Christ? Is Christ being revealed? When, we, when he's testified of? Yes. 
John 14, verse 26, look what the Bible says. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall do what? Teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. So the spirit of truth is the same as the Holy Ghost, and he is the comforter. He's the what? Because the, there is comfort in the truth. Some people love a lie. I was talking to someone that was teaching their child about Santa Claus. And I said to them, you know the problem with Santa Claus? It's not the fact that he doesn't exist. The problem with Santa Claus is is that children love truth. And when they find out you have been lying to them for years and years, they will never fully trust you ever again in their entire lives. In the back of their mind, they're going to remember, you lied to me when I was innocent. And there was no reason to tell me a lie. Is there a reason to tell people a lie about Santa Claus? There's no reason. And the children, that same parent will say, well, there is a man named Jesus and he died for our sins. And you say, well, if Santa Claus is fake, then Jesus must be fake, too. Everything's fake. That's why most children don't believe in the things their parents believe, because their parents taught it to them in a lie. You understand? So why am I making this big point? OK. See, there is something that we must understand. Lord, where is that? Hold on one second. Candace, you may not be able to get this one because you need to unhide this, this slide. See, watch this now. This is the gospel of our salvation. The first, the second, and the third angel's message is found here. I'll show it to you. When Jesus comes, he first comes as a prophet. Therefore, the spirit of prophecy will continue so long as Christ is teaching the truth. Watch this now. But once he has done his work as a prophet to teach the truth, then the truth has to be met with error and then the truth will sacrifice itself in order to show that it is the truth what does the truth do what did i say he does it sacrifices what remember what the lord says husbands love your wives even as christ loved the church and gave himself for it watch he came to teach now watch, this is very powerful. I want you to catch this now. A man is in the position to teach his wife. She is not supposed to be in a position to where she teaches him. It goes against the scriptures. Why? Does it mean a man can't be learn something from a woman? That's not what it means at all. It means that how she teaches him cannot come from a position of authority. It can only come from a, a position of submission and surrender. And if a woman doesn't understand that, no man will listen to her. The only ones that, that she does have authority over are her children. Does a woman have authority over her husband? Anybody? Why not? Go with me in your Bibles, Ephesians. I'm going to show you this. I'm not trying to beat up on women. I'm trying to show you why God set things up the way he does. Ephesians chapter 5. Let me show you this, verse 22. I'm going to show you a principle that if you receive it, then the blessings of God can come with it, and then you'll know how to navigate difficult situations. Ephesians 5, the Bible says, Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as unto the Lord, for the husband is the what? Anybody there? Verse 23. 
Ephesians 5, 23, what is the husband? He is the head of the wife. Please tell me, who does the teaching? The hands, the feet, the chest, the back, the legs. Who does the teaching? Where does teaching come from? The head, right? So the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the what? Now watch this. Anybody know what another word for a prophet is? Yes, seer. But there's another word that goes with it. Hold on. Go with me in your Bibles to the book of 1 Corinthians. Chapter 12, Father. Verse 27. When you get there, just say amen. 1 Corinthians 12, 27, the Bible says, Now ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular. And God had set some in the church... First apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, and after that miracles, get, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles, have all the gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? Watch this now. The thing that a, some people who teach prophecy... They're doing the work of a prophet. A prophet and a teacher go together. Prophets and teachers. That's, you can find that, Father in Heaven, where is that text at? I can't think of it. I'll have to come up with it later. Why am I giving this point? Okay? Jesus came as a prophet, and he began to do what? Go with me to Acts chapter... Acts chapter 10 and verse 37. Yes, he did do healing. But what was his healing for? What was he trying to do through his healing? Acts chapter 10, excuse me. Verse 38. We get there. Amen. amen. Acts 10, 38. The Bible says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing what? Good and doing what else? Healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. All of his healings as a prophet was to teach lessons. Did he teach lessons through healing? When he healed on the Sabbath, was he trying to teach about how to really keep the Sabbath? Right. When he healed the demonic, when the little boy, that the, the demon would throw him in the fire, was he trying to teach a lesson about fasting and prayer? Here you go. So watch. The Bible teaches Jesus was a prophet and he came as a prophet. But when he was done prophesying, what did he do? Go with me to Acts chapter one and verse nine. Acts 1 verse 9. What did he do? We'll start with verse 6. Acts chapter 1 verse 6. Look what the Bible says. Are we there? Now listen. The reason why we need the Spirit, because the Spirit gives us love. We are filled with love. And many times when you're filled with love, you begin to cry. Do you know what tears are created for? Do you know why crying, why God makes us cry? Crying is to bring you to the point of willingness to change. Do you know that that is why when children cry, they come to the end of what has happened, they don't know how to fix the thing. So what happened is when you come to tears, 
Now you are open to change. That's why the scripture says he puts all of our tears in a bottle. This shows all the times we came to we were willing to change. Acts chapter one, verse six. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, when are, when wilt thou uh, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? They didn't even understand the prophetic times. Verse seven. And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the father had put into his own power. But ye shall receive power after that. What everyone? Anybody there? Acts chapter one, verse eight. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Now watch. He teaches, verse 9, look what happens. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. So watch. He, he stopped preaching, uh, he stopped teaching. Then he went up to heaven and that's what happened. Go to Hebrews chapter 8. Hebrews chapter 8. What did Jesus do? Hebrews chapter 8. Verse one. See, when he stopped prophesying, then he began to be a priest. Now, I'm going to make this point because I'm going to finish with showing you how the book of Revelation is divided in two parts. I'll show it to you. And it shows because he is no longer he he does prophesy, but he prophesies from earth. But he ministers from heaven. Hebrews chapter eight, verse one. Now the things which we have spoken, this is the sum. We have such an high priest who is set at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens, a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle, which the Lord pitched and not man. For every high priest is ordained to offer gifts and sacrifices. Wherefore, it is of necessity that this man have somewhat also to offer. What was he offering? His own blood, his own body. My blood, my blood is what he said. Verse four, for if he were on earth, he should not be a priest. Seeing that there are priests that offer gifts according to what? The law. The law. So Jesus cannot be a priest on the earth. He can only be a priest in the true tabernacle, which the Lord pitched and not man. Who serve unto the example and shadow of heavenly things, as Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle. For see, saith he, that thou make all things according to the pattern showed thee in the mount. Okay. Pastor, why am I making all these points? Jesus in the book of Revelation is fulfilling these three roles. Prophet, priest, king. When he needed to prophesy of the things that would happen shortly, he came back to the earth and gave the prophecies to John. Go to Revelation chapter one and let us prepare to close. John is on the earth in the Isle of Patmos. We'll talk more about that at a later date. He is on the earth in the Isle of Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. And being there, he came to John. Jesus came to John the same way he came to Daniel, because John and Daniel were going to give the prophecies that would tell us what and when the things would occur so that we could be prepared for his coming. The first and second. Daniel prophesied a lot about the first. Preparing for the first. And in relation to the second. John preaches about the second. Having experienced the prophecies of Daniel in the first. Revelation chapter 1. Verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave unto him. Right? Right? To show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. 
who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things that which are written therein for the time is at hand. So Christ was doing the work of a prophet because where was he? Watch this. John is writing verse four, John to the seven churches which are in Asia. Grace be unto thee, unto you, and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come, and from the seven spirits which are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and that hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. And so then, so watch. John says in verse nine, I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in a book and send it unto the seven churches, which are in Asia. Unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. See, listen. See, the reason why marriage is so important, because the man would speak. But his wife is the embodiment of all that he teaches. Now, I want you to catch this now because I'm not speak. I'm speaking about Christ in the church. When Christ speaks. We are to be the embodiment of all that he says. And the very first thing he wants us to have before he gives us the truth is he wants us to have his spirit. Being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks and the candlesticks can only be lit if they have oil in them. And the oil is a representation of the spirit, the character that the spirit moves upon us to have. So bringing this to a close. See, the book of Revelation is divided into two parts, two parts. A man of God who doesn't even believe the truth anymore taught this to me and it forever made the book of Revelation easy to understand. I'm going to make it easy for you right now. OK. See, Daniel. And the Revelation. They both have something powerful. We've read this. I'm going to move forward. See, the book of Revelation is divided in how many parts did I say? Two parts. What are they? What are the two parts? Part one is chapters Revelation chapter one through Revelation chapter 11. This is the first part. What occurs? Jesus in Revelation chapter one is not he's not on the earth. He's still in the air. He never touches the earth, but he is at the earth talking to John, revealing to him. His work. See, Jesus, when he left the earth in Acts chapter one, he left the disciples were here on earth. This represents earth, the courtyard. And he went into the holy place. Well, first thing he did was he went in and he uh, he anointed the entire service. That's why it took about 10 days when he anointed it all. He lit all everything was lit up. Everything was set out. Then when he anointed, he poured upon them his spirit. And that's when the candlesticks were lit, as it were, and they received the spirit. And so for um, so Jesus was doing the work of the, the priest, the high priest in the holy place. That's what he was doing. Then when he came back to prophesy to John in, in Revelation chapter one, he left here, came to John, gave him the book of Revelation. Then he went back and ministered here until 1844. Revelation chapter 11, go with me to Revelation 11, verse 15. 
Revelation 11, verse 15. Let me show you that from Revelation 11, verse 15. Somebody turn to 15, 11. Look what the Bible says. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall do what, everyone? Oh, wait a second. He becomes a king. Revelation 11 shows you at what point he goes from being, he was a prophet, still is a prophet, but he's doing the work now of a priest. And when he's closing out his work as work as a priest, he is receiving his kingdom. Now. Verse 15. Sorry. And the seventh angel sounded and there were great voices in heaven saying the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdom of our, of our Lord and of his Christ. And he shall reign forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders which sat before him on their seats fell upon their faces and worshiped God. Verse 17, saying, we give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art and wast and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee that great power and hast reigned. And the nations were angry. Why are they angry? Because the devil knows that Christ is reigning. And if he's reigning, he's going to come back as a king and take what's his. And so it's the struggle over who gets what. Talking about the people. And the nations were angry and their wrath has come in the time of the dead that they should be judged. And that thou shouldest give uh, reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and them which that fear thy name, small and great. And shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. Verse 19. And the temple of God was open, opened in heaven. And there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament. And there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake and great hail. So here you have it. So he leaves. This is October 22nd, 1844. He comes in here and stands right here. Watch Revelation chapter one. He goes into the whole the he, he's making progress from earth to the holy place to the most holy. So now let's see what part two is. Part two is simply the reverse. Him leaving the most holy and going back and going back from the most holy. He's cleansing the sanctuary and he's going to come back to the earth. And that's the end of the book. Matter of fact, probation closes in Revelation 14. Probation is closed. When the message is given. Revelation 14 verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Verse 13. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me. Right blessed are the dead. Which dine the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the spirit that they may rest from their labels and their labors and their works to follow them. Verse 14. And I looked and behold a white cloud and upon the white upon the cloud. One sat like unto the son of man, having on his head a golden crown and in his hand a what? A sharp sickle. That's the second coming. You get it? Now watch the entire rest of the book of Revelation is written for the people who are going to go through those experiences. If you're alive during the third angel's message, Revelation 12 and 13, of course, but 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22 are for you. So that whatever happens, you can compare it with what's written in the book. You've received the spirit and now you know the truth. And it's an amazing thing. Because you know Jesus, other people know about him. Oh, but hold on. There are those who are in other denominations. 
There are Mormons and Jehovah Witnesses and there are Baptists and Catholics and there are Methodists and there are people who don't know any of these things who the spirit is working on. And in their heart, they 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 are grateful. They are following the workings of the spirit in their lives. They're 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 making resolutions saying, I'm not going to drink anymore. I'm not going to do drugs anymore. That's the work of the spirit. The desire to do better, the desire to become a better man, a better woman, a better person. That's the work of the spirit upon all flesh. And my point is, as I close out on this Revelation 16 says it is done. That's the plagues. Revelation 19 says it is finished. That's the things. This is a this is a repeat and enlargement of the truth. God takes this truth and he repeats it and he enlarges it. And he does so because he says that you are special. You are amongst those who have the opportunity to be alive when he comes back. And even if you die before he comes back, but you gave the third angel's message, which is which means the truth, including the Sabbath. You're going to, you'll wake up in a special resurrection. And that's what I wanted to share this evening. Because my people are destroyed from a lack of something. And it's knowledge rejected. I prove to you, you don't have to keep Sabbath in order to be a prophet. Because all of the prophets that God gave to us, every single one was a prophet before they kept Sabbath. Because how do you become a prophet? By the spirit. Right. And then he's going to lead you into what? And the Sabbath is the truth. And we want to teach people the truth. We want our children to love the truth. But if we burden them with so much that. That they, that they don't see the love of it. Many give it up because they struggle with the fact that they don't have the love in it. If we want to win the world, we have to love them. They have to see the love of the truth in us. But we don't need to join them. No, no. We, I didn't say join them. I didn't say go do their foolishness. But you know what love is? That's why the Bible says here is the patience of the saints. You know what that is? That's loving somebody who isn't what they should or could have been until they become that person. That's love. Because that's what God's doing for us. He's being patient with us till we become the people that do the things so that we can have the stuff he has for us. That heaven's prepared. We're the ones he's waiting. He's being patient on to get ready. Does everybody understand? And I understand that sometimes I say things in it and it's like, oh, pastor, why you got to say it like that? But I'm trying really to share it in a way so that it hits, but it but it's softened with love. Any questions? Facebook, make post your questions. Anybody else? I said, I'm going to do something that I have not been doing. There are people that are watching our videos on Facebook or on YouTube or they got the Zoom link. I want to invite you to come and to join our congregation. It is a blessing to watch online. It is far more powerful to be there in person. Yes. Microphone. Can you hear me? Louder. Can you hear me? Go ahead. Um, you said that a husband can't, no, a wife can't teach a husband anything because he's the head and they're the body. But doesn't your body teach you things like if you eat something and you 
get sick, it teaches your brain or your head not to do that. So, so I didn't quite understand that. Yes. Okay. So watch. So the body teaches you by experience. The head teaches you by vocalization. So if a wife sits her husband down and says, I'm going to tell you how to do this thing. I'm going to tell you how to fold clothes. I'm going to tell you how to wash the dishes. What's going to happen? Does he want to fold clothes? He's like, no, baby, I'll let you do it. You're good. <laughs> but what she does is she does it. She teaches him in love by example and by service. This is how the body teaches. The body doesn't talk. Right. You can learn sign language, but the, otherwise the body doesn't talk. You teach by the, what you do. That is one of the most the most valuable. And so. But I'm not saying that a woman can, that a woman can't share. It's the spirit and manner in which it's shared. When Jesus was a child, how did he teach the elders? Did he teach him? But he didn't come and like, sit down. Let me tell you where well, you guys are wrong. <laughs> right. What did he do? He asked questions. He came as a learner. He came in humility. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying a woman can't teach a man. I'm saying she can't do it as a man. She has to do it as a woman. Where she has far more power. She says, oh, you know what? Here's your favorite food. Here's this, this, and this. And I was thinking, do you think we should really buy that? I mean, you could do what you want. I trust you. But I was just wondering, wouldn't our money be best spent if we did it this way? He's eating that good food and he's saying... Baby, I think you might be right. <laughs> That's how a woman teaches a man. But to say, I am the president of Harvard. Sit down and obey me, man. No, I'm good. I'd rather not know. Because men care more about how a thing is given than what is given. You know? If your children say things to you and disrespect, thanks, Dad. You know what? <laughs> you know what? That's okay. Just go home. <laughs> um, am I wrong? All right. We're going to stop there. But uh, we covered Revelation chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. This is part 1. We're going to go through Revelation. It's going to set up the whole book. But I just showed you the two parts. Jesus going to the most holy and Jesus coming out of the most holy. That's the book of Revelation. You understand the sanctuary? You understand the book of Revelation. All right. Now, that was worth the price of admission. Let's pray. <laughs> Father in heaven, thank you again for love and grace. And Lord, thank you again for the truth. But more than anything, thank you for the spirit that we might be able to understand the truth. Please, Lord, forgive us for where we have separated from your spirit. Remind us, Lord, to submit ourselves, therefore, to God, that we might resist the devil so that he would flee from us. Help us, Lord, to prophesy, to teach, even as you have taught us to teach. And so, Lord, be with us, I pray. Be with these, your children. And, Lord, we, we beckon those whom you have called to come and to join us, that we might not only learn together, but labor together for souls. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for coming. Thank you for joining us on Facebook, YouTube, Zoom, or wherever else you might be watching this. God bless. Take care.